we're going to start using watercolor pencils. Now, these might look like regular old colored pencils, but they are not. They are actually paint pencils. Yep, you heard me correctly, paint pencils. Let me explain a little bit about them. You can tell the difference between a paint pencil and a regular colored pencil because they have a paintbrush right on the side. They also say watercolor right beside the paintbrush. So you know this is a paint pencil and not a regular colored pencil. Use these for painting projects only, please. Do not use these for anything other than painting projects. I'll show you a little bit about how these work on a scrap piece of paper before I start on my project. To use these pencils, you simply color right on the paper like you would with a normal colored pencil. You really don't need to press very hard at all with these. The color comes off pretty easily. If you want a lighter color, use very light pressure. If you want a darker color, go over it a few times with a few layers. You don't have to press very hard. Please don't press very hard with these pencils because the tip would just break off. So if you want a darker color, just go over it a few times with some some more layers of color. So lighter, light pressure, darker, more layers. If your pencil gets dull, it just um, gets sharpened like a regular colored pencil would in a sharpener. One of these handheld sharpeners would be just fine. Or if you have an electric pencil sharpener like we have in the classroom, that would work too. After coloring, the next thing to do is use a wet paintbrush right on top of the colored pencil. Dip it into the water, wipe the extra on the edge of the cup or the bowl, and just go right over top of the paint or the pencil and it turns into paint. Pretty cool, huh? Look at that. Now I'm going to wash off this color and go to this one to see how much lighter it is. There we go, that's a nice dark red and that's more like a rosy pink color. Because I didn't use a lot of color, I just used a lot of uh, very small amount of pressure and not a lot of layers of color on this one. I used a lot of layers of red on this one, that's why it's darker. Okay, now remember, just like we would with regular paints, anytime you wanna change to a different color or a different section color, uh, wash off your brush. Dip, wipe it on the edge of the cup or the bowl and go right over top. Nice dark orange because I used a lot of layers there. Very light color orange because I didn't use a lot of layers here and I used very light pressure. Before you begin, make sure you write your name on your paper with pencil and then flip your paper over so your name is on the back. Now these are the three colors that I felt um, work best for our watercolor cats because these are the most realistic colors that we can use for our watercolor cats. So black, brown, and orange are great colors to use. I'm going to use brown. So take your um, watercolor pencil and we're going to draw a big oval in the middle of our paper. Don't make your oval teeny tiny because then your cat's going to be really teeny tiny. A nice big oval is what we want for the cat's body. Next, we're going to draw a nice big circle for the cat's head. Okay, so these are just our basic shapes for the cat. It's not going to look like a cat just yet because we didn't add any details yet. All right, when you're done drawing those ovals and circles, color in your cat, and then add some lines, some zigzag lines or scribble lines or swirling, curling lines around those shapes to make your cat look extra fluffy and extra furry. This is going to give your cat some texture. Texture is the way something feels or the way something looks like it feels if you touch it. So we want our cat to have the texture of fur and being soft and fluffy. All right, now it's time to paint our watercolor cats. So dip your brush into the water and wipe the extra off on the edge of the cup or the bowl. So dip, wipe, and then swirl and swipe on your paper. Notice I'm painting in circle motions because this is also going to help give my cat some furry texture. Those circle motions that I'm making are making the paint spread out in a circle motion. 
So um, it's going to give your cat a little bit of extra texture. So that's why I'm working in a circle motion. Paint the head and the body and the whole cat. Remember, we're not adding details just yet. We're going to save those for next time when the paint is dry. So I'm just going to keep painting my cat's body and finish up and then I'll be back in a minute. If you're painting and you feel like your brush is not moving as well and the paint's not spreading out as much, just dip your brush back into the water and give it a little drink and then go back to your paper. Sometimes that happens with the watercolor pencils. All right, making some little swirls around here, giving my cat some extra texture, some extra furry texture. All right, I am done. Now let's talk about cleanup. Your brush, if you're in the classroom, your brush goes to the sink. If you're at home, you need to wash your brush with some soap and water and then leave it to dry on your placemat. Um, dump your water in the sink. If you are in the classroom, your artwork and placemat go to the drying rack. If you are at home, you need to find a spot that is flat and hard so that your artwork can dry flat. Um, until the next time we come back to these.